Kia ora, folks. It's Saturday. Let's look at integration by parts. Right now we're going to cover the following three examples and lay out exactly how integration by parts gets set up. And then in the following session, we'll go through a couple more examples straight away. So here's my first question. Faced with this integral, what do you do? So find the integral of x times cos of x. So let's just try to work it out. So we know that whatever our integral is going to be, we should be able to differentiate it in order to come back to x times cos of x. So straight away, let's notice here that we have a function times a function. And for differentiation, this is going to be a product rule. And so the product rule will lead to two terms. So you'll have f prime g and then g f prime. So let's just go ahead and find the derivative here. So let's say d by dx of x times cos x. And so using the product rule, we're going to do derivative of x first. So that's 1 cos x plus, and now we do the opposite. We do the derivative of cosine. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, and then multiplied by x. So what does this look like? This looks like cos x minus x sine x. And so we can see some similarities that we're comparing to here. So we've got an x sine x, and here we have an x cos x. So that's close. Now in trig, your sine and your cos just flip-flop back and forth with a negative sign in there as well. So if we want this second term to be x cos x, what can I do? Well, let's flip my original cosine to sine x. And so let's go again. Find the derivative of x sine x using product rule. So we're going to have 1 times sine x plus x times cos x. So now we can see here, I'm getting closer, right? There's x cos x, and there's x cos x. So now I just have this extra term. So I have an extra sine x. So how can I handle that extra term? Well, if I were to subtract that sine x somehow, then it would be gone. So I'm going to try to compensate. And in my original derivative, I'm going to say, if this is extra, I'm going to say if I subtract it, then these two, okay, would cancel and go to zero. But keep in mind that I've taken a derivative to get to this point. So let's instead say an extra cosine of x. And this one is going to sneak in right here. So let's see how this looks. I'll move over a bit. So find the derivative of x sine x. And then we're going to have minus cosine x. So this whole thing, okay, so we'll go term by term. The first term is a product rule, and I've already found that, right? That's what this term is right here. So I've got x cos x plus sine x, and that just accommodates for this derivative here. And then I need a derivative of minus cosine x. So the derivative of cos is negative sine. So that's negative, negative sine x. So this simplifies to, so I have an extra, these two become positive. So I'm getting closer, except I have plus two sine x and I needed to subtract one. So going back, I needed, instead of to have a minus sine x, I needed to change this to a plus cos and then the derivative um, becomes minus sine. So I'm hacking my way to a solution here. 
So then I have x cos x plus sine minus sine x because up above I only had a single negative and we can see those two terms go away and I'm left with x cosine of x. So what does that mean? That means that this in here is my integral. x times sine x plus cosine x and I've shown that I can take a derivative and recover that integral. So I managed to hack it together with trial and error. Now this is a perfectly reasonable method to use but you may end up wasting a lot of effort and maybe if you do enough trial and error with something you might find a shortcut or a model or even an algorithm that works out every time to help you along the way. So let's see what we can do. Now we used the product rule to help us get there to see that in order to find a function that would differentiate to x sine x I needed to have a product rule. So let's just recap and write down what the product rule is. So given two functions f at x and g at x the product rule wants to find a derivative of f at x times g at x. So there it is. And then I'm going to write d by dx in some big brackets and then I'll go through and write down the rest of my product rule. So keeping track of my terms I have a f prime times g and then I have an f times g prime. An order here is not important but it's a good idea to always do it the same way. Okay that looks okay. So what happens now remember we're trying to find an integral so what happens if I integrate both sides. So on the left I have an integral of a derivative, okay? An integral of a derivative, so that should recover my original function. So that's f at x times g of x. I didn't write the dot down, but if you write them side by side that just means that they're multiplied together, so that's fine. I also left out a dot here and here. So on the right hand side I might want some big brackets in here for the integral. I have to integrate both those terms and then I'll split it up. So I have the integral of f prime times g plus the integral of f times g prime of x. So this is starting to sound familiar. And now all I'm going to do is take this third term here and I'm going to isolate it. So I'm going to move it in this case to the uh, I'm going to leave it where it is and I'm going to move this term to the left and then I'm going to rewrite it. So rearranging I have the integral of f at x g prime equals f times g minus the integral of f prime g. So we now have that negative side in there um, that I've moved this integral to the other side of the equation. So that's where the negative comes from. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So you may recognize this as the formula for integration by parts, and indeed it is. So this says that to find the integral of two functions multiplied together, as long as one can be written as a regular function and one as a derivative, you can apply this right hand side formula. So you just do f times g minus the integral of f prime times g and that should recover your original integral if you've set it up this way. So this just says the same thing, only I've typed it out. You can pause it here and run through if you wish. Before we move on and get into some examples, let's rewrite the formula so that it's a bit easier to digest. So instead of always writing f prime of x times g prime of x and so on, and actually in my formula I forgot to write dx, so that's very important that you 
know with respect to what variable you're integrating there, but I left it out. So if we get lazy, we can actually just sort of leave out all the x's if we just assume that we know what variable we're talking about. So we could say here integral of f g prime equals, and then it's just by themselves fg minus the integral of f prime g. So that's a bit more condensed and it sort of you know flows off the tongue a bit better. Conversely, uh, you may have learned with different letters. So I like f and g because f is for function. Uh, you may have learned with u and v as well. So the integral of u v prime equals u v minus the integral of u prime v. Now one more addition uh, that I just thought of here that I just remembered. Instead of writing v prime, we could write u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du, where d is for derivative instead of writing the prime symbol. So here's this typed out a little bit neater. Okay, let's do our first proper example here with integration by parts. So find the integral of x times e to the x. So notice here that we've got it split into, well, just the way that it's written, you can split this down the middle into two separate functions. So that's kind of the first step, is identifying that you can write it as a product rule, like f times g prime. So that's the first step. So as it's written, we kind of have some color codings here. So we're going to choose x to be f. Whoops. So we're going to choose x to be f and e to the x to be g prime. So let's go ahead and write this in. I like to use a two by two matrix here. So you can imagine a box it in here like so. So I'm just going to write down f at x equals x. So that's a straight copy from here. And then g prime goes over in this row. And so that's going to be e to the x. And again, that's a straight copy. So that's my first step. Step two now is to calculate sort of the opposite. So if you choose f, you need to calculate f prime. And if you choose g prime, then you need to actually integrate to find g. So. What's the derivative of x? Well, that's just 1, so that's easy. And what is the integral of e to the x? Well, that's itself. So that's going to be e to the x. So that also is nice and easy. So note that in my process here, on the left to go this way, I differentiate to go from f to f prime. And on the right to go this way, I have to integrate. So I have to find the integral of g prime. So one's derivative, one's an integral. And if these integrals are easy and, and if this integral and derivative are easy, then actually your whole integration by parts is going to be really easy as well. Okay, step three is to sub into the formula. So my formula says if you have f times g prime, which we do, we have x times e to the x. So to find that integral, there's my integral sign, all I have to do is sub in the pieces. So first off, I'm subbing in f at x. So there's x. Next up, I'm subbing in g of x over here. So there's e to the x. Next up, I have to do minus the integral, and then I'm subbing in f prime, so that's just a 1, and that's very key. If you have a 1 there, that's easy, right? Because that doesn't affect your integration, that doesn't add any complexity. And then we write down g to the x, which in this case is e to the x. Okay, so 
before I clean this up, let's just look at what we have. We have the integral on the left, and then we have x times e to the x. That's sorted. We don't have to do anything. But I still have this final integration here. So in step three, I say and integrate. So that's what this means is that you have one more integration to complete. So before I can move on, I have to find the integral of 1 times e to the x. And that's nice because that integrates to itself. So this will just be e to the x down here. Don't forget your constant plus c. OK, so going back, and I'll just write it all in black, we have the integral of x e to the x dx equals. We have x times e to the x subtract e to the x plus c. And this now is my final integral using integration by parts. Sometimes here, when you're done, you can factor. So we can see I have a common e to the x term. but I'm not too worried about that. I've done the integration. There we go. OK, my next example, I have not immediately color coded what to choose for f and g prime. So we need to pick. We need to split up my function somehow. So between x and sine x, we can split it straight down the middle like this. Note, you cannot split up the x from sine, right? That's attached. So there's no brackets drawn here, but those are joined up. And then I also have this 1 third factor, so over 3. So maybe I'll keep that in. Maybe I'll bring it outside. Uh, it's up to your personal preference there. So let's just go ahead and choose the first one, which is x, and let's make this f. And I'm going to take the 3 with it. I don't know why, I just am. And then sort of the next portion is going to be g prime. So let's go ahead and write it down. So sine x goes there. Um, x over 3 goes here. And now, in order to get to this, and now in order to get to the second line, I have to differentiate. So f to f prime is a derivative. So x over three, the derivative is just one third. And then I have to integrate sine. So that's a nice standard integral. So this is going to be negative cosine, right? So cosine turns into negative sign when you differentiate. So I have an extra negative out front. OK, so that doesn't look that bad. Now let's just, before we move on, let's look ahead before we do the work. The next step is to find this integral. And it's going to be f times g. And f, sorry, it's going to be f prime times g. And f prime times g is along the bottom row. So when you're looking ahead here, the bottom row needs to be multiplied and then integrated. And why is that important? Well, if you have a constant here, 1 third, that's going to be easy to integrate. So let's go ahead, clear out some of this highlighter. So let's go ahead and write in what we know. So this integral equals f at x, which is x by 3. f prime, oh, sorry, no, nope. what's next? g at x, which is minus cos x. Make sure you put some brackets in there. And then I have minus the integral of f prime times g, which is minus cos x. So now I'm thinking, can I solve this integral? easily. And I look at it and all I have there is a cosine of x. The minus one third you could take out front and I think yes I can solve that integral. So the integral of cosine of x is sine. So I can simplify some of this. So this integral equals minus x cos x all over 3. And then I'm going to have a, I have one, two negatives to bring out front so that's plus one third. And then I have a cosine x to integrate. So that's going to be sine 
x plus c. And I've kind of mixed and matched how I write this down. So I might want to write it something like this or maybe factor out the one third when you're finished. One last thing I'll mention here about writing this in a nice two by two matrix is that you get this nice uh, sort of visual representation. So your original integral is across the top. So that is what the integral you're looking for. And then you say, well, that equals f times g. And what's f times g? f times g is on the diagonal. And then you subtract the integral of f prime times g. So you kind of get this backward z shape um, to your integration by parts. And as a visual person that likes diagrams, that really helps me. I can do a backward z like this, and I know what order I'm going in, and I know what comes up next. All right, next up we'll do three more examples.